Hey everybody, thanks for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. Today, a close-up look at Graham Powers K100 Mark 12. This is a hammer-fired, double-action, single-action, polymer frame pistol from Slovakia, chambered in 9mm. I'll talk about why I kind of have this gun, talk about what came in the box, and take a close-up look at what I think is a very cool gun with some very cool features. So, Two shout outs before I get started. First, Global Ordnance, the importer record for both Grand Power and for RX. They have a couple of brands in those two that offer tremendous values for what you get in firearms. So Global Ordnance ran a massive sale last week because they will pick this guy up on the cheap for a price that's just too, low, too good to be true. And they ran 20% off of a sale price. So great sales from Global Ordnance. If you haven't signed up for the mailing list, I would. I'll put a link to their website and to this product page in the descriptions below. So shout out to them, but also shout out to the guys at gbgunsdepot.com. I think Graham is the guy who does the videos there. He is the guy who inspired me to give this gun a try to start with because he has the most dedicated Grand Power website I've seen out there with very detailed videos on almost every model they offer, and they offer a lot of models. So I would definitely check out his videos and his website. I'll put the link in the description below as well because he is the man online for Grand Power knowledge. And this is how I chose to start my Grand Power journey. The K100 is the first gun started by Grand Power. This is a full-size model. Uh, and Grand Power started by an ex-Slovak army officer in the mid-90s who actually designed the gun on paper in the mid-90s. But due to like communism and the restrictive manufacturing rules, I don't think production started until the early to mid 2000s on the first Grand Power, Grand Power firearms. And the K100 was the first firearm that came out. Interesting, interestingly enough, the K is the last name of the owner of the company, the guy that started it all. It's the first letter of his last name. And 100 was his weight in uh, kilograms. So very interesting um, story about the description of the name. That's at least what it said on the company website. So very cool story there. We'll look at what came in the box and take a look at the features of this firearm. So in the box, and by the way, it's a very nice sturdy box. Most of the boxes I'm getting today from SIG and H&K are flimsy boxes with just plain foam in there. This guy comes with a very detailed cutout system to hold all of your products. Your gun comes with a magazine installed. You get an extra 15 round magazine here and a third 15 round magazine actually just came laying on top. So a total of three mags. So great price with extra value, which is very cool. It also comes with a total of four back straps. The companies do offer adjustable back straps. Usually offer a small, medium, and large. This comes with a small or small, a medium, a large, and a large with the beaver tail on there. So you get just a little extra with the Grand Powers, which I think is very cool. Also in here, you get the obligatory cleaning brush, but you also get, I think this is pretty interesting, extra front sights. So the front sights, I believe, are plastic, but if you don't like, and they're zero to 15 yards, or 15 meters rather, is what I've read online. But if you don't like the sight position when you hold the firearm, it comes with a shorter and taller front post you can install. So very cool feature there. And I think this is pretty neat. The owner's manual that comes with it, you know, the K100 is what most all the new model, all the other models are based off of. The P1, the P40, P11, Excalibur, are all based off the K100. Uh, they're all kind of detailed here in this very thin owner's manual. And it talks a little bit about each of the, the models and how, you know, why they exist and what they came to be, as well as a very detailed spec sheet for each of the models. So while it's a thin owner's manual, it's pretty darn cool. But you came here to see the gun, so let's take a close-up look at the gun, which is a very awesome piece of machinery. A safety check for those that like that kind of thing. Empty 15 round mag, empty firearm, and so the gun is clear. And this is a double action, single action, polymer frame firearm from Slovakia. Most people probably can't find it on a map, but it's in Eastern Europe and they make some really cool guns in both the Czech Republic and Slovakia, formerly Czechoslovakia. Up, we'll start up top with just the three dot sight picture, which is a very good sight picture, very easy to see, pretty basic setup there. No details up here to deflect glare, but just a nice sight picture altogether. You have both front and rear cocking serrations, which are very easy to manipulate, very easy to get your hands on. You can see how the barrel protrudes slightly from the slide up front there. The machining on this guy, especially for a relatively inexpensive firearm, is first class. 
You've got the one slot pick rail. It's interesting to me that I see more and more of these today as opposed to the multi slotted pick rails, but you do have a pick rail here for all your accessories. Uh, details underneath, you have you know, some texturing on the front here in case you need to use that, as well as the, the ledge on the bottom of the trigger guard, trigger guard here. Trigger guard is not massive, good for fingers. I'm not sure it's good for gloved fingers. Uh, also a good undercut underneath here for a good purchase on there. So it is very comfortable in the hand. I'll check out the different back straps to see how they fit. They should just slide off the back and slide on. It's harder than that, but that's just the basic premise of it. And you have some, you know, some uh, striation or some checkering here and here. So feels fine in the hand, not too slick at all. My favorite, my two favorite features though, one is the fact that it has a rotating barrel, and which is what got me interested in this gun. If you've seen my channel recently, you know that I've fallen head over heels in love with the PX4 from Beretta, which has a rotating barrel design. It's my new favorite gun to shoot. It shoots super accurately. And that's why I chose this guy, because I want to see how this rotating barrel compares to the Beretta. As far as I know, those are the only two guns out there with rotating barrels today. Am I missing something? Let me know. I would love to hear. But I love the fact it has this rotating barrel design. Normally a tilting barrel comes back, tilts down, and that enhances muzzle flip because you have the action coming back and flipping up. This guy just turns straight back and rotates so the firearm comes straight back in your hand as opposed to coming up like that. At least that's how it works on the Breda. I assume this is gonna be exactly the same. So love, love, love the rotating barrel. But I also love the fact that this guy is 100% fully ambidextrous. Being a lefty, we're oftentimes forgot about but not grand power. I believe that all grand powers are 100% ambi. And we'll take a look here. So we have slide stop, slide catch on both sides. Love that. You also have the safety here, and that does work if you have the hammer locked. Pull trigger, nothing happens. Super easy to actuate, both left and right hand here. So safe on, safe off, pull the trigger. And my favorite feature of all is this ambi mag release. You can see that works left and right. So on this side, push it, pops out. On this side, push it, pops out. So most companies say they have an ambi gun with a reversible mag release, but that's not truly ambi because it's either left or right. So very cool that Grand Power offers a fully ambidextrous gun for left-handers like me. Love all those features. The one thing that surprised me when I picked it up though, after I dry fired it the first time, was the trigger. So we'll take a look at the trigger against double action. I've not measured the weight, but it does have a very heavy double action pull, as you would expect, as it's your safety. Probably in the 10, 11 pound range is my guess. Smooth, but heavy, which is fine. But the reset on the single action is pretty special. Check this out. That's it. And you're at the wall and you go bang. So one more time. You do that. It goes bang. Incredibly short reset. So I am very pleasantly surprised with that. I'll tell you, it's better than a stock Beretta trigger. The stock Beretta PX4 trigger has a little bit longer reset and a little bit of take up. Uh, it, once you send their, your PX4 off to Langley Tactical or order from them, you get that kind of reset. But that gets north of $1,000 once you buy the gun and send to Langdon or buy from Langdon directly for the good stuff. So the trigger reset feels amazing. Definitely watch in the future for comparison videos between this and the PX4. The full-size PX4 is my new favorite gun to shoot. And I definitely want to see how this guy compares to it. So love, love, love this gun. We'll take a quick look inside. Disassembly is not normal, and reassembly is really hard. So I'll take it apart, show you the internals, and end the video there, because I will not try to put this back together on camera. I hope I can even take it apart on camera. To take it apart, you've got two takedown levers here. You pull those down while pulling the slide back and up and over. And the way that Graham taught me on GB Guns, if I can remember correctly, is to lock your finger here, pull these down. Oh, I'm doing this wrong. Let me take the camera off. So I'll pull, I may have to do it off camera so I embarrass myself too bad on here. Yeah, take it off camera, hang on. There it came, sorry guys. It takes a little getting used to. But inside here, take a look at this. So you'll see that you've got the recoil spring there, which I assume there's different weights available for you. And the guide rod is actually captured. I've not seen that before, very interesting. And it is tied to this roller system right here, this metal roller. So if you're familiar with the PX4, 
this has a different rotating system inside. And again, I will do a comparison video where you can see those. But look at the machining inside this guy. For an opening price point gun, one of the least expensive guns I own, the, qua the quality and craftsmanship is really, really first class. So love, love, love the detail inside here. A couple of really important callouts here. One is this is like a steel insert. So instead of having just metal inserts tabbed here and here and here, this is a full metal insert, which I think will add to reliability. And I hear it helps with shootability too, as you have a full rail to ride on inserted in here. So that's pretty cool. And you may have noticed as I was flipping this up, these initials here, this is the guy that uh, assembled the firearm. They have one person who assembles each firearm over there and they put their name on there. So they take pride in their craftsmanship. So thank you for what I think is a pretty cool gun, FGW. Love that. Now while I have this part, I think it's also cool to see how this rotating barrel system kind of works. Again, I mentioned it doesn't tilt. The, the ammo feeds directly into the barrel from here. No tilting, it just shoots straight in as the barrel rotates. So that is a very cool feature that should help make this a pretty smooth shooter. Now inside here, let's see if I can get the barrel out. The barrel also looks amazing. Very cool design, very good craftsmanship. So very nice barrel and inside the slide. Again, this is a fairly inexpensive gun and you see the machining inside here is really nice. No weight, you know, lots of weight cut out where you don't need it. And you can almost see the locking system there. I'll see if I can work on a good view for you guys when I compare the PX4 to the K100. So that is my look at the K100 from Grand Power, a full size rotating barrel um, hammer fired firearm. I can't wait to get some rounds in. As always, thank you guys for watching the Arkansas Gun Guy. If you haven't yet, please like and subscribe. It helped me grow my little channel. Thanks.